Okay, David, uh, can you talk about these uh, large black fish pieces? They look like I see a flounder and some shark faces. When I was first putting two-dimensional images like this fish onto forms, um, I kept in the back of my mind that I really wanted to make some three-dimensional fish. And I like the idea that ceramics can be sculptural as well as functional. So I thought that turning the three-dimensional fish into candle holders would be a logical way to go and still really concentrate on the sculptural form. So the trick was to, for me anyway, was to go from sketches and drawings of fish into three-dimensional fish and really how to go about it. So the first thing for me was to um, simplify the construction of the fish. And the simplest way I found to do that was to rough out the shape of a fish um, the left side, for example, with a piece of styrofoam and then rough shape the right side with a piece of styrofoam. Use those as simple molds to drape slabs of clay over and when they hardened enough to put those two parts together and still have the styrofoam shapes to produce more fish. So this fish and this fish are done from the same styrofoam forms it's just that this one's been cut off to be shorter than that one. This one was done from uh, uh, two forms for a, a halibut. And these are wheel thrown sharks. Um, while we're talking about wheel forms versus um, constructed clay or slab construction, uh, if people don't know, you do throw pottery on a wheel which is our traditional understanding of ceramics. And you also make forms out of the slabs. And uh, as a teacher, I know that you've taught these different ways of making work. What is your favorite or what are, what are, what's the draw between the different types of working? Um, I got to say, initially, I was a hand builder. Um, I was terrible on the wheel. My professor, Ron Myers, uh, was brutally honest with me. And in the end, though, he always encouraged me to get back on the wheel. And his theory was if I practiced enough, I would eventually learn how to do it. And he was right. But it took me a long time. So he encouraged me to hand build while I tried to learn on the wheel. And for the longest time, my hand building was what I really enjoyed the most, um, what I produced the best work with. And over time, the wheel finally started to pay off. And I got to say, now I'd rather sit at the wheel than hand build. But I still do both. And the, of all the fish series, I'm still making three dimensional fish. I've cut out the drawings on the pots. Um, I produce so many that um, I think I beat it to death. And doing any more is just, um, it's not growing. I'm not learning from it. But I still learn from producing these. This is a physical feat, without a doubt, in clay. To make it so it didn't fall apart was one thing. To pick it up off the table and get it into the bisque kill when it's basically as fragile as eggshells was beyond my comprehension. And the very fact that it went into a high fire kill and it didn't warp and bend in a weird way. I've had these candle holders just be losers completely because the two candles bent way over to the side in the firing, and there's no way to light them. But these three happen to be successful. This is the only lantern. Um, and that leads me to do one more question, um, David, which is um, I noticed that in this whole show, to me as a viewer, I see that you don't just have a one-off piece usually. You have a piece or two. Maybe one's a different glaze color. Maybe one's a different size. Um, and I, to me, that seemed like you might be um, having to fire something. And, and some are wood-fired. Some are gas-fired. And so as, as the experimentation uh, of your work is going on, uh, does that lead you to make multiples or to try something again with ceramics? 
Um, I think that that's true. It, it also simply is that that when you work in a series, um, I think you develop uh, a number of pieces before you really achieve success. Um, one of the, for example, one of the, the most recent things that I've done is to make these handles on these cups that taper dramatically from the top to the bottom and they have all these ridges. And it took me so long in the studio to figure out how to do that. And now when I go to group firings, almost all the potters ask me, how do I make those handles? And um, I explain that, that through repetition and experimentation, I've developed a way to make them and I describe to them how to make them. And potters, I think, are unlike other artists, maybe more so than any other artists. We're kind of at the bottom rung of the ladder when it comes to art. There's painting at the top, there's sculpture, there's printmaking, there's drawing. I think this is the order in which they are regarded uh, from the top to the bottom. Uh, after the drawing, there's photography, and then I think it's macrame and decoupage, and way down at the bottom, I'm being humorous here, is ceramics. And I think it takes just as much intelligence to apply paint to canvas as it does chisel to stone, as it does to make in a pot. And if you're really a good potter, you understand form, you understand how forms come together, and with ceramics, you have to understand the physics of the material. It, it is a material that is constantly changing. It changes from the wet state to the dry state to the glazed, finished glazed state, and everything that you can imagine can go wrong from the wet clay to where it's finally finished. It is a humbling material in that you can have a piece that comes out of the kill that people are astonished by, and then watching it cool, it can shatter before your eyes. And then the big problem is you've got to figure out how to keep that from happening again. And it can be a variety of things. It can be the how it was fired. It can be the glazes used. It can be the clay. It can be a combination of the clay and the glaze. It can be a combination of the clay, the glaze, and how the kill was fired. And you've got to figure out somehow, through really experimentation is the only way, to make it stop happening and to end up with successful work. I find it's the most challenging medium that I have ever touched and I have worked with a lot of different materials.